The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Paul Dubov, with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan. <laughs> War changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over too. Adventure had become his business, the adventures of Frank Race. We join Frank Race for the adventure of the Big Top. The words Florida and winter never seem to make sense when you put them together. But when circus people speak of winter quarters, they're usually talking about Florida in the off-season. Yet even in its off-season, the circus is still a spread of bespangled excitement. Even in winter quarters, it sprawls and sweats, and in spots, smells to high heaven. At the moment, Mark Donovan and I happen to be in one of those spots. Oh, brother. There is suddenly an aroma around here which don't have nothing to do with them roses of pickety which they sing about. <laughs> it's probably those giraffes over there, Mark. <sighs> Leave us get out of here before I start staggering. Oh, <laughs> guy could lose his hearing in a fog like this. Cut it out. I'm looking for Mr. McClune. We're supposed to meet him here. Yeah. Couldn't be the guy over there by the water and trough, could it? Could be and is. Come on, Mark. Well, look, Grace, who is this guy, McClung? Multimillionaire. Owns half the hotels down here. So you're an insurance investigator, and you come all the way to Florida to meet a guy at the circus. That's fine, but I don't get it. Mr. McClune is worried about his wife's welfare. He wrote of his worry to the Medina Life Insurance Company. Seems they indemnify her life for a million dollars, and they saw fit to send me down here. Multimillionaire, huh? He don't look it to me, brother. He don't look it. Mark was right. Phineas J. McClune looked about as tycoonish as the second base of an off-pitch choral group. He was an aged little man with a puckered expression, and his hand clasp had all the warmth of a blackjack dealer's smile. I suppose you're wondering why I suggested this is a meeting place, Mr. Race. It's because I don't wish my wife to know about you. And since the circus seems to be so much in the picture... It was only natural that we meet here, don't you think? I may think so, Mr. McClune, in a minute. Yeah, do you know my wife, Mr. Ray? Only through the newspapers. She's uh, quite a social leader. Oh, a great social leader. One of the first ladies of our adopted state. And that's just why I can't understand all this. Uh, all what, Mr. McClune? Well, these circus ruffians threatening her. Is that your problem? Mm, of course, it could be caused by her attitude. She's not in favor of circuses. She firmly believes they have a disturbing influence on the younger generation. A very disturbing influence. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's a lot of malarkey. Psychus never hurt no kid I ever knew. Why the psychus is as important to a kid as Christmas or the Fourth of July? Yes, I, I, well, you may be right. Uh, who are you, by the way? My assistant, Mr. Donovan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, of course. Well, you may be quite right, Mr. Landigan. No, no, uh, Donovan. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, but my wife... Well... A number of circus people have appeared at our home of late, and Mrs. McClune always seems to have to argue with them to get them to leave. And I want you to look into it, Mr. Race. Well, then I'd better have a chance to talk to her, don't you think? Mm, you uh, believe that's necessary? Seems so to me. Mm, well, if you think you need to. Uh, she's a very dominant woman. Very dominant. But... Well, very well, Mr. Race. If you'll come to my home this evening, um, say about seven... That's fine, fine. Mm, very well, then, Mr. Race. I shall be expecting you. Oh, and you too, Mr. Demijohn. What? Your odd name, that, isn't it? Are there many more of you? Yeah, yeah, they tell me quite a few, Mr. McClone. Quite a few. Huh? Really? Well, well, the strength in numbers isn't there. Uh, good day, gentlemen. I shall see you this evening. Hey, Race. Yes, Mark? Look, don't Demi have a meaning of some kind? Yes, it means half. Oh, that's ridiculous. How could I be half, John? That old guy sounds cracked to me. <laughs> he seems rather eccentric, all right. Hey, 
He couldn't have been kidding me, could he? I don't think he meant to, Mark. I wish I was sure. I certainly wish I was sure. Mark and I didn't leave right away. There was nostalgia there for both of us. So we did some more prowling around, going from the animal section into a tent where aerialists worked aloft and clowns cavorted in the sawdust, perfecting routines for the opening of the tour only a week or so away. And it was while we watched that Mark nudged me. We are being given the big double O, chum. Maybe we ain't welcome around here. Where? In them two over there. The clown and the other guy. Here they come now. And they ain't all smiles. There's no reason for trouble, Mark. Take it easy. Hey, you! Yeah, what do you have? What are you doing around here? Who are you? Oh, just a couple of tourists. Who are you? Hmm. Get this dude, Ben. He wants to know who we are. Yeah, comic. You heard the question, Rube. What are you doing around here? No harm. We've just been taking in the sights. Taking in the sights, huh? Come on with us. What for? Just because we say so, that's all. <laughs> you guys call me a comic. You want to know something, fellas? Look, to back up that chatter, you're going to need reinforcements. They're asking for a lesson, Ben. Yeah, especially the Gabby one. <laughs> and school starts with this. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That's called beating a guy to the punch, Ben. And now you got sawdust on the back of your lap. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how long you last. Hey, Rube! Hey, Race, here come the reinforcements. Time to duck. We ducked, only to find it a lost cause. There were too many of them coming from too many directions. We gave up dodging, tried breaking through. But I knew it was going to be like an off-tackle smash going sour, and it was. Oh! <laughs> It was probably about 20 minutes later that I stopped spitting sawdust and sat up. We were on a wooden floor now. After we'd been rendered helpless, Mark and I had been spread-eagled across half a dozen shoulders and carried to some sort of an office. I looked at the base of a swivel chair and at the feet of some man who sat in it. He spoke to us. Don't you know it can't be done? <sighs> what can't be done? Winning a fight from circus hands in their home grounds? Yeah, well, just the same. Just the same what? Eh, just the same, we didn't do so bad. A couple of those creeps had their noses in the dirt just as deep as we had ours. Well, next time you come, buy tickets, will you? We can use the money. Something in that voice made me look higher up till I stared into a face out of the past. A face wearing a broad grin. <laughs> I've been wondering when you were going to recognize me, Race. What? <laughs> Oh, Larry! Larry LeClaire! <laughs> ah, you saw him again, you. Hey. When I saw who the boys had dragged in here, I could hardly believe my eyes. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, Mark, you've heard me speak of this fellow. Larry LeClaire served in the OSS oh, with me. Yeah, Best yeah. judo man we had. Yeah, sure. I recall you giving me plenty of trouble on occasion. Ah, uh, hey, hey, what are you doing here? Forgetting something, aren't you, Race? My full name, Lawrence Lansing LeClaire. And this outfit... Happens is... to be the Lansing Brothers Circus. You mean you're running the show? Yes, Race, I'm running it. Inherited a lot of stock from my mother. Got control about three years ago. Not that I'm doing so well. Financially, the Lansing Brothers Circus is limping badly. Ah, but never mind that. Come on down to the pie car with me. Maybe some coffee will soothe those bruises, huh? <laughs> he told us more about it as we sat at the food counter of the show's pet lounging spot. Circus was running into bad luck. Had been for some time. There'd been recent sabotage, which was why Mark and I had been jumped as strangers who might be out to do some more damage. We figure it could be coming from some of the smaller carnivals, probably trying to chop us down to their size. And they might do it before long. Yeah, but Lansing Brothers, why, that's one of the biggest shows in the business. We were hurt badly about 18 months ago, Donovan. Had a big blowdown in the Middle West. Lost a lot of equipment, even animals. Hurt us badly. And we've been taking it on the chin here. Two fires in the last few weeks. First one took $20,000 worth of food supplies. Second one burned a dozen trucks and a lot of canvas. Well, you'll hardly believe it, Race. But I don't have the funds to get the show to Atlanta. Our first date for the new season. Oh, but Larry, can't you borrow some money? Mm, I'm already up to my neck, to the tune of a quarter of a million. It has to be paid out in the next four months. No, oh, that's awful. Some people think they got troubles. <laughs> well, I've got one possible out. The Amalgamated Women's Clubs of Florida... I'm dickering with them to put on a couple of charity performances in Miami. All I'm asking is enough to cover expenses and move the show to Atlanta. That's one deal I simply have to make or I'm through. A 
at 7 o'clock that evening, Mark and I presented ourselves at the door to the McLoon Mansion, a facade that could have straddled a 20th Century Limited. And Mrs. McLoon matched her home. Wearing a hat like an inverted kettle drum, she swept in just after we got there, eyeing us with the gaze of a jaundiced macaw. She took over at once, backing her husband into a nearby corner. What's going on here? Have you been making some more of your peculiar friendships, Phineas? Uh, no, 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 my dear. It's just that I've been worrying about those thugs who've been looking around the house lately. So I called in an investigator. Oh, Phineas, I have never heard of anything so ridiculous. No, 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 my dear. I was only thinking of your safety. Her oh, safety, he says. That dame could handle a platoon of Marines. What's that? Uh, just passing the time of day, lady. That's a... I don't care for whispering in my own home, young man. Did you, did you say these were investigators, Phineas? A and you talk about thugs infesting the place? Well, this whispering fellow has one of the most unprepossessing faces I have ever no, seen. No, 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 I'll take it easy, lady. With a puss like yours, you've got no call to go around dispossessing other people's faces. Mrs. Know. McClune, your husband seems to think you're threatened with some sort of danger. <laughs> oh, well, who on earth would threaten me? Yeah, I think you made a point. <laughs> Don't be impudent, young man. Mr. McClune, this afternoon you said you felt Mrs. McClune was in danger of being harassed by circus people. Do you mind telling us why you believe that? No, I don't mind at all, Mr. Ray. The other day, when I came home, I saw a man performing somersaults on the lawn. And when I asked him what he was doing, he said he was an acrobat with a circus. It's logical. Now, while we were talking, another man came from around the other side of the house and joined him. And when I asked them what they wanted, they said they were here to see my wife. Now, I ask you, gentlemen, and you, my and dear... And just because of that... Oh, well, Phineas, you're an idiot. Yes, my dear. My husband, you see, is very imaginative. Yeah, but, my dear... I won't hear any more about I... it. I am accepting the presidency of the Amalgamated Women's Club tomorrow, and I intend to be fresh and ready for the inaugural speech. Good evening, Phineas. Hey, hey wait, 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 wait. And... Now, what do you want? Uh, look, look, lady, do you say you was going to be president of all the dames clubs in the state? Oh, that's a thoroughly crude way of putting it, but the answer is yes. Hey, you hear that, Race? Uh, listen, lady, look, we got a pal in trouble, and you could do him an awful big favor. I am not interested in doing favors for anyone. Yeah, but look, this boy is a president, too. President of the Lansing Brothers Circus. And all he wants is, is, is to do a benefit for you frails down in Miami. Young man, I detest circuses. Oh, you're kidding. They're a disturbing influence on the younger generation, a thoroughly disturbing influence. Ah, that's a lot of malarkey. The psychist never hurt no kid I young ever Young man, if you're trying to argue with me, you may as well save your breath. And you can tell your circus president that the Amalgamated Women's Club have no intention of patronizing any circus in any way or for any reason. Good night. <laughs> We'll return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. And now, back to the adventures of Frank Race. Delivering bad news to people is not one of my favorite pastimes. But leaving Larry LeClaire in the dark as to his deal with the women's clubs wouldn't have been helpful. So Mark and I went to see him about it the next morning. The information froze the smile on his face and dropped him limply into his desk chair. Well, that rips it. Know anyone who might give me a job, Race? Oh, it can't be as bad as all that. My friend, you have no idea. It's hey, bad. Mr. LeClaire! Yeah, what is it, son? We got trouble. Trouble? Bunch of guys moving in a lot. Big top end figures they're out to wreck the main tent. Over my dead body. Come on! Do you have enough men to handle this, Larry? The lot looks deserted. Oh, more of my luck. Except for the cage boys and a few others, I'll let the rest leave for the weekend. Well, you can count on us, can you, Race? He sure no, can. No, no, no. You fellas stay out of it. These things get pretty bad. Are you kidding? What do you think we are? Violets? Hey, Mr. Race. Mr. Race. Mr. McClune, what are you doing here? Oh, I, I called your hotel and they said you'd gone out to the circus ground, so... My word. What's going on here? All those refugees. Mr. McClune, you'd better clear out of here. Mark. Uh, 
Mark! Your friend ducked out, Race. Yeah, I guess he don't want no part of no free-for-all. If Mark Donovan ducked out, he had something in mind. All right, hold it. We'll make our stand right here. Yo, man! What are you trying to do here? You're all washed up, LeClaire. We're closing you out as of now. Hey, I know that guy, Mr. LeClaire. He used to be with Colmark's carnival down in Louisiana. Well, you're going to meet him again soon. They're moving in. Yeah, I don't know how we can stop them. It's three to one. Hey, Race! Move back! Move back! It was Mark atop an elephant. And behind him were three other men on more elephants. We skipped aside to let them pass, and they really broke it up. Well, I'd feel a lot happier about winning that skirmish if it weren't for old man McClune getting hurt. How is he, Race? Still unconscious. You mind if I use this phone, Larry? No, go ahead. That, uh, that gang off the lot? Every last one of them. Donovan, you really turned the trick with those elephants. <laughs> Just like hiding a bulldozer, even better. McClune residence? Mrs. McClune, please. Frank Race calling. Hey, Race, how was the old man hurt? I imagine he fell trying to get out of the way. Must have hit his head on something. You got a nasty welt there. Hello? Mrs. McClune, this is Frank Race. I'm calling from the Lansing Brothers Circus lot. And this is a dame that never stops slugging. I brought you to the phone to tell you there's been a brawl here and that your husband's been hurt. Uh, my husband? A Phineas McClune? You have only one, I trust. What do you mean he's hurt? How badly? He was hit on the head. He's unconscious. Uh, where is he? Where do you have him? We're on the circus lot. Well, I understand that, but where on the lot? We have him in the pie car. Well, we... don't move him. Don't let anyone else move him. I should be right there. Well, Race? Larry, that clown of yours, the one called Slim. Mm, yeah, what about him? He said he knew one of those fellows who made the attack. Mm, that's right, Slim did say that. Your publicity man, does he happen to be on the lot? Uh, that's Charlie Rowland. No, no, he's in New York. Uh, but his assistant's here, uh, Gil Prentice. Good, I'd like to see him right now. And then I'd like to talk to Slim about the fellow he recognized. Maybe I can give you a helping hand with your troubles. <laughs> According to Slim, the attacker he'd recognized was called Pete Bannister. And three boarding houses and two bars later, we caught up with him to find him half gone from the contents of a dozen ale cans that littered his room. This was a break, since he didn't remember us as being participants in the morning's free-for-all. Yeah, I'm Pete Bannister. What y'all want? Tell him, Mark. Sure. We was with Goldmark's Carnival down Louisiana way. We heard that you used to be one of the gang. Oh, I certainly did. <laughs> oh, so you meant with Goldmark, were you? Yeah. That's a great outfit. A great outfit. Uh, sit down here. Sit down. And the Goldmark boys are friends of mine, you know. I I wish I had something to offer you fellas in the way of a drink. No, nah, no, don't I... worry about that, pal. I took a deep breath when yeah. I first come in, and I picked up a glow that should last me for hours. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you fellas are all right, yeah. you know. I hey, sure yeah, are. Yeah, fine, fine. Yeah. When did y'all blow in? Yeah, just now. And uh, we heard that you could put us next to something good. Uh, oh. Something with lots of dough, you know, not much flavor. <laughs> well, now, can you handle yourself? In a fight, I mean. Would we have been with Goldmark if we couldn't handle ourselves? No, ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, how about the deal? Huh? Oh, the deal. Oh, sure, sure. I'll tell you where he can latch on to something real good. Huh? A little excitement, a little nice money for it. <laughs> His address and the name of the party. Hey, how you doing, Pete? Oh, hi, boy, just in yeah, time. I thought I'd drop over there. Hey. Hey, when did you take up with these guys? Well, there was a couple of boys used to be with Goldmark. Yeah, like Fat that yeah. used to be with Goldmark. These turkeys were with a Lansing outfit this morning fighting on their side. Come on, Mark, I believe we hey, better... wait a minute. You rubes ain't going nowhere. The man's got a gun, Race. Yes, he has, hasn't he? Which means we'll probably have to resort to violence. Yeah, you ain't resorting to nothing. I'll back up both of you, say... Uh, Timber! Uh, uh, yeah, what... you... That's all for you, lad! Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's go, Race. Come on. Mind if we come in, Larry? Oh, come on in, Race. Find out anything? Sour news again, Larry. That gang is reforming to come back. 
They picked up more men, and this time they're out to wreck your whole outfit. Yeah, and they'll be showing up any minute. Well, then why on earth don't you call the police, you idiots? Mrs. McClune. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's still here, Race. And Mr. McClune, too. Doctor said he shouldn't be disturbed for a while. Uh, I'm all right now. I... I want to go home. Well, you can't go home, Phineas, not for another hour. And you need your rest, and you're going to get it. Yeah, but he ain't going to get much rest staying here. So I have you to contend with again, young man? <laughs> Look, I I'm just telling you, lady. This ain't going to be no spot for no rescue. I repeat, why not call the police? Take them too long to get here. And you can't expect them to station half the force in this one spot. Hey, boss! Boss, yeah. trouble again. And this time it won't do no good to use no elephants. They brought along bull hooks. How close are they, Slim? Oh, they're coming across the marsh. I'll be here in about three minutes. All right. We'll get out. Leave it to them. I can't hold it anyway. So why take a chance on more people getting hurt? It can be stopped quite simply if one person will go out there and say a few words. Well, then, for heaven's sakes, let us see that it's done. Now, who is this person? Mr. McClone. My husband? Well, what on earth are you talking about? It's your husband who's been hiring those men to wreck this circus. I found that out this afternoon. How about it, Mr. McClune? You're quite right. I am the guilty party. Phineas? Well, not in heaven's name. Why? All for the love of you, lady. And if that ain't some sweet mystery of life, I'll put in with you. Oh, I, I was afraid they were going to hurt you, my dear. These circus people... So I decided to eliminate the root of it, the circus itself. Well, Phineas, of all the insane idiot... Uh, look, you people must understand that my husband is very eccentric. Well, that may be true, but this was actually your fault. My fault? You've been so ashamed of once being a bareback rider that you turned it into a hatred for the circus. When old-time circus friends came to see you, you turned them away, harshly. Your husband got the idea you were fighting with him. And, of course, he thought you were in danger. Oh, well, Mr. Racer, I don't know what ever led you to believe that I have ever been connected with a circus. You but... led me to believe it, Mrs. McClune, when you didn't bother to ask me for directions when I told you to come to the pie car. The average person doesn't know what a pie car is. And, and... neither did I, not until I got here and asked a pair of joys how I... Uh... So... <laughs> Well, that's a very interesting thing. So you asked a pair of joeys, did you? And uh, mm. tell me, what are joeys, Mrs. McClune? They're, uh, they're clowns, aren't they? But only someone familiar with the circus would know that, wouldn't they? Oh, my dear, my dear. Now, look here. You, you, you can't prove anything from all this silly bother. Here, that, uh, have a look at this photograph, Mrs. McClune. It's from the files of this very circus. It was taken, uh, I would say... 30 years ago, and it's the likeness of one Annie Foulard equestrian. And since your name happens to be Anastasia Foulard um, McClune, the, uh, the newspapers can make quite a splash out of that, don't you think? Uh, I don't now, know. are you going to ask your husband to get rid of that mob out there? Uh, I, I shall take care of it. I shall take care of it at once. Oh, just in time, too. Well, if... If you people have said all that you have to oh, say... Oh, no, 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 not quite, Mrs. McClune. <laughs> Anastasia, Foulard McClune. There's, um, there's still a little matter of the Amalgamated Women's Clubs of Florida commissioning Mr. LeClaire to uh, take this circus to Miami. <laughs> well, very well. I shall see to it that the necessary arrangements are made in the next few days. Hey, hey, that's wonderful. Mrs. McClune. Well, now what? The next time those old circus friends visit you, I wouldn't run them off with harsh words. You might find a lot of happiness in getting together with them. And I think you could do yourself another psychological good turn if you organized a social equestrian group to appear for those charity shows in Miami. With you as star. Me? Oh, riding again? Might be a good idea, don't you think? Oh, well, perhaps you are right. Yes. Perhaps you are right. Yeah, and lady, look, if you really want to get the crowds in, do me a favor, do your act in tights, huh? <laughs> With that shape, you're a cinch to fill every seat in the tent. The 
Adventures of Frank Ray, starring Paul Dubov with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Bert Holland, Larry Dobkin, Wilms Herbert, and Michael Ann Barrett. Our story was written and directed by Buckley Angel. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production. <laughs>